Hello and welcome. My name is Grace and in this video, uh, since today is Friday, happy Friday, um, I wanted to do a Friday flashback kind of video. And then this morning, I mm -hmm. saw Lou Valcour posted um, top five nostalgia decks. And I said, oh my gosh, Lou, you got the right idea. So, if you don't know who Lou Valcour is, where have you been? No, really, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, if you don't know who Lou Valcour is, I will post a link to her channel uh, in the information box below. So, I, I kind of cheated um, for this video. I have one, two, three, four, five decks. I have, I think I have six. One is an honorable, I guess I'll, I really have seven decks I'll explain the first deck or pair of decks that for me are extremely nostalgic because they take me back to um, simpler times when there wasn't probably um, as much available as there is today and they are still a perennial favorite the artist has uh, passed away years ago and her work is still available just do a search for it and the uh, honorable mention or the cheating pair of decks that I will count as one are the goddess knowledge cards so this is the god, god by Susan Satan Boulay so I'm going to try to not get here we go there we go less glare So these are the goddess knowledge cards. I'm not going to, uh, here, oh yeah, I am going to spin them around because I'm like that. Oh, I love these. These have these amazing paintings by this gifted artist on the front. And they're just so nostalgic for me. They're one of the first non-tarot decks, if not the first, I don't know. They're one of the first for sure of the non-tarot decks I've ever purchased. Each card has a write-up on the back of the goddess it's featuring, or a fe obviously of the goddess that the painting is of in the front. This one is Hera. And it's companion. The two of them live together in my little bag. Is the animal spirits knowledge cards. <laughs> Love these two. Absolutely. My only pet peeve is, as you may have, uh, you may know by now if you've, if you've watched any of my videos where I'm reviewing cards, is this blank space around, you know, I love when the cards are, uh, you know, borderless and go to the, the painting goes to the edges of the card. And it's a real pet peeve of mine that they could not format some of them. Oh, look at this. Look at this. That they could not format them some of them I'll give you an example because you know we're here might as well talk about a pet peeve see this I freaking hate this but love these cards nostalgic feeling it um, yeah really brings back some good memories so that's one the next one is also um, a deck I've had for a long time. I can't even tell you when. It, I, I must have gotten these before my kids were born. But anyway, I, I made a bag for it. And the bag matches the backs. So if you have this deck, you know exactly what I'm going to pull out of this bag. And these are medicine cards. Oh, I love these. These are, oh yeah, for sure they're from before my kids were born because it was 1988. So like these were, these are like the first, these probably were the first non-tarot cards I ever purchased. And because of this like crazy, um, almost plastic cardstock, look, look how they've held up. Oh my goodness. I love these. I love these. I love these. And these are the standard by which I hold all other animal decks which is sad because um, clearly I love these why do I keep trying to get 
uh, a new animal deck. But yeah, these are my, by Jamie Sims and David Carson. These are my animal, my, sorry, not my animal, my medicine cards. And I absolutely love them. So yeah, these. And I have the I have the guidebook on my shelf by just showing you my cards. The next one is a deck is the first deck I ever made a bag for. And this one too. Um, it is the first fairy deck I ever purchased, and my all-time favorite. And again, because it was my first one, and it's a classic. Um, it is the standard by which I hold all others, and it's Brian Froud's Fairies. I have them in order because I um, recently used them in a video where I demonstrated, or demonstrated, or like, you know, did show and tell of the, bo of the books, of the decks that I modified. These were... And these I edged. Love these. This is like oh, th this is nostalgia. The um, the art is nostalgia to me. Mm. Uh, I love this artist's work, Brian Froud. These cards are nostalgic to me because after medicine cards, I think these were the next. This was the next deck I purchased that was not tarot. For sure, it's my first fairy deck, and but the standard by which I hold all others. The next um, deck, I think, is from the '90s. I'm not sure. Let me let me cheat. Let me look. Let me look it up and see what the uh, copyright says. Yeah, I got. So these are from the mid '90s, and these remind me of. I'm nostal they're nostalgic to me because they're um, from the mid '90s, and the mid '90s when was when there was a big explosion of books and and decks available um, mainstream. Mainstream. What I'm meaning is that like there was a lot available. It was the early days of internet shopping. You know what I'm saying? It's and it's the Halloween Tarot by Karen Lee. Art by Kipling West. Mine is trimmed and edged because it originally comes with white borders and on the front and on the back, which I found distracting. I love this deck. I find this deck to be extremely nostalgic. It reminds me of my childhood, Halloween art from my childhood. So it has like a, although it's from the 90s, the mid 90s, it does remind me a lot of the when I was a kid in the 70s. Especially, oh my gosh, look at this, the chariot, the hearse. I don't know, it's got a very um, Scooby-Doo vibe about it. And I just love it. Although the art, the art style is not Hanna-Barbera, um, I still get that kind of feeling. And it's very nostalgic. It reminds me of the candy wrappers. I grew up in Montreal. And at Halloween, uh, there's this taffy that's sold. Uh, as Halloween candy and the wrappers were black and orange and often had some kind of uh, image on it like this black cat so yeah it, and I expect I expect the deck to smell like candy it does not nostalgia oh my gosh yeah and then the, uh, the last two and uh, it's supposed to be five decks and I uh, I'm pretty sure I slipped more than five into this one the last two, of course, when it comes to um, nostalgia decks, I would be remiss if I did not feature Rider weight. And the one that I'm featuring in this is the, the blue box or the purple box. I'm not uh, depending, I guess. It's the one that's it's the one that was sold in the UK. It's the one that was marketed in the UK in the 90s. Uh, is the outer box. The cards on the inside um, appear to be a little older than 90s. I got these um, secondhand to replace my deck from the 80s and 
I don't know. They seem a little older. The cardstock is really beautiful. And the plaid backs are very muted. It's not the really bold plaid backs that are being printed today. This is nostalgia extraordinaire for me. This is the first tarot deck I have. Well, not this actual physical deck. But this is the first... Um, my first ever tarot deck in my life was a, red, a plaid back Rider weight from the 1980s. My original deck was uh, made by AGM. It did not have the copyright. And um, I passed that on to a friend in the, probably in the 80s. Um, and my dear friend still has that deck. And may you use it in good health, Anna. And, uh, <laughs> um, this one has, you know, this, this is just, this is just beautiful. I think of the later, uh, Rider weight um, printings, I think this, I know the lighting is bad. I promise I'm going to be rectifying the lighting situation. The glare is horrible with natural lighting today and with, um, artificial lighting. Um, yeah, it's not so good either. So thank you for your patience. I'm working on getting my lighting situation sorted out. So I don't know if you could see, but these, this is just a beautiful printing of this deck. The cardstock is um, cardboard with like a, almost like a wax, just a light waxy covering on it. Beautiful, beautiful. I love the blues and the yellows in this deck. The blues are so clear and the yellows are not obnoxious. Love it, love it, love it. See, this is what I mean. The yellows are not obnoxious. I don't know. Actually, this lighting kind of captures the fact that the yellow is, um, it's a little brighter on screen than it is in real life. So yeah, first ever. So this is representative of my first ever tarot deck. I absolutely adore this. It is still the deck I go back to when I want to, um, I want advice from an old friend. And the last deck, so let me let me just count because I need to know what I did here. One, two, three, four, five, six, oh, seven. I guess the Susan Seton Boulay um, decks, those are honorary mentions. And of course, the last one that is very nostalgic because I am, a, I, I grew up in the 1970s. And if you've watched my, if you've even watched one of my videos, you probably, I'm always talking about this deck. I will always talk about this deck. I love Rider Waite is my first love because it was my first system, my first deck that, you know, I ever learned tarot. And this one is the Hoi Polloi. Mine is the 1972, so it's it really looks like someone it it I love this um Rider weight knockoff. It's very nostalgic to me for the the color palette. It is early 1970s color palette. This is what the world looked like to me as a child in the early 1970s. And what I really love about this deck, it is totally imperfect. It's the um, it's not centered. It's not printed centered. So some some of them have like a skinnier border on one side and a thicker border on the other, as you could see. I love that when I look at this deck, it looks like it looks to me like what I if I had seen a tarot deck when I was a kid, how I would have recreated my own from memory. I would have remembered the, f the foreground. I would have remembered like the central figure of but I would not probably wouldn't have internalized what the background looked like. Drawn with a pen, maybe a ballpoint pen or a pencil and then colored in with markers. This just, I adore this deck and you'll probably see it a lot on my channel, sorry. I do have another, I do have another copy of this deck and I, I don't, I don't foresee needing two in the future. Uh, I may make it available for swap or sale at some point. I won't be asking so, you know, anything astronomical. Um, 
just because that one is a later printing. This is like the really garish 1972 uh, color palette. The other um, copy that I own, it's still in box with the pamphlet, probably appears to be a later printing because it's um, the coloration, the color palette is not as strong it's as, as this one. Looks a little more refined. Um, <laughs> if uh, knockoff, Rider Waite knockoff can be refined. Anyway, that's it for me. That's my uh, Flashback Friday video where I uh, share with you my five, really seven, uh, nostalgia decks. Um, I look forward to seeing other people do the same thing. And I call it Flashback Friday. Ideally, I would like to start a series, but I don't want to promise anything just in case um, I don't have time, like if the timing doesn't work out for me to do it. Thanks for stopping by and have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.